Hey guys, so today is yarn skeining day and that means that I've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> so I figured that I would show you guys how I skein up yarn and I would show you the uh, tool that I built to help skein up yarn. It definitely makes the process go a little bit quicker and it makes the process a little bit easier on me with and a little bit uh, more even results for sure. Um, definitely produces more even results. Yeah, you can see the freeloader in the background there. He's uh, not helping. <laughs> so this is basically the setup that I use. It was just kind of a quick and dirty project, honestly. I didn't spend a ton of time making this. I mean, maybe a half an hour. And here you've got an eye hook. The yarn gets looped around that. And down here, and if anybody wants plans or whatever for this, I mean, I can post them somewhere, I suppose, or individually send them to you. It doesn't really matter to me. I mean, it's not, this isn't very hard to, to come up with or to make. It's, it's pretty simple engineering. So here I've just got a 2x4 that the eye hook is screwed into. These are L brackets just to brace it. And honestly, I... I don't know what I was thinking when I made this, but if I were to make it again, these locks I would have placed on the front, and you'll see why. But around the back here, uh, you can see that I've got just some regular pipe threads, or regular, um, regular steel pipe, and basically it's just so that I can add these weights. These are standard weights, um, which means that they've got a one inch uh, diameter hole and so in order to make that fit properly I just used a three-quarter inch pipe here and so it's attached with just a uh, an attachment at the base there and it works out pretty well this is just a piece of three to three-quarter inch plywood that I had laying around so I can just stack as many weight plates as I want to these are each five pound, just cheap weight plates uh, that you can get from, from the store. So back here, I'm going to take the weight plates off to show you guys this. The weight plates come off on each side. And this is what I like about this design here. So what you can do with this, actually, is you can flip these locks up on either side. These are just like suitcase locks. Uh, you can find them at any hardware store, honestly. And what you can do is when you flip those up, this entire thing folds back. And that allows you to slide it underneath a bed or in a cupboard. I mean, it, it doesn't seem like a lot to do that, but it, it reduces the height quite a bit, actually, by you know at least, I don't know, four or five inches or so so yeah works out pretty well holds it pretty tight and like I said if I was to if I was to do this design again I probably would have put these on the front just because you're never pulling back when you're skeining up the iron and I'll show you how I do that in just a second but you're never pulling back you're always pulling forward and uh, I've got this hinge on the back here it was just some uh, cabinet hinge that I had laying around and so you, you don't really ever have to worry about this tipping forward, uh, but you do kind of have to worry about it tipping back. And if you, I mean, if you reef on it hard enough, it will come out, but I've never, I've never had an issue with it. So let's make sure that I got, I'm going to flip the camera around here. This is with the new um, G7X Mark II. And check the model name there and so I'm, I'm still getting used to the camera so excuse any focus issues or what have you but I'm gonna try and get this all framed up for you right on okay so to start I'm just gonna put my weights back on now the only tool that I use to do this and this is actually Tiffany's idea um, and I don't know whether she saw it somewhere else, but uh, she's, she's a smart cookie. She could have come up with it herself. Uh, is 
right here this uh, knitting needle and this is a size 11 so it just you'll see how it helps in just a moment so I'll start out with a skein of yarn this is the Aurora colorway and so I'll start out with one skein of yarn and I like to straighten them out as much as possible before I start uh, skeining them up and the reason for that is that it tends to produce a lot more even results so what I do and what I found that works the best these zip ties are just for dyeing uh, when we use them to move around in the pots and the pans it, it tends to help but what I tend to do to straighten the yarn out for me it works because uh, to have large hands my hands are kind of Sasquatch hands but <laughs> but what helps is to put on the flat blade of my hand and just to pull and make sure that the the fibers are aligned that the individual strands are as aligned as possible and you don't want to reef on these just because um, you don't want to pull apart the ties where it's anchored to but um, but you do kind of want to give it a little bit of attention I just kind of work around the skinny yarn a little bit to get it kind of even just to make sure everything's kind of running in the same direction I like to keep this zip tie on until I'm just ready to skein that up because it tends to keep all the fiber or all the strands running the way that they're supposed to. So, and I cut the uh, zip tie and I've got it held. You can usually um, it, you can usually start anywhere. I don't. I'm not generally picky with how I skein them up unless there's a, in a particular dye lot there unless there's uh, chunks of color like in vintage Christmas there's chunks of color and if that's the case then I tend to try and skein them up at the same point hooked onto here I, I try to hook them up at the same point within the skein between skeins just so that when we've got them lined up it uh, will be uniform in appearance as opposed to having uh, skeins that almost look like they're from a different dye lot or even a different colorway it can make that much of a difference uh, from my experience anyway so anyway I will hook the skein around that eye hook there and I just kind of straighten it out kind of move the camera a little bit here so you can see that so I'll straighten it out and I'm going to take this uh, knitting needle and I'm going to insert the knitting needle between the yarn skein here and pull it kind of taut okay not crazy tight because I don't want to put way too much tension into this yarn I don't want to stretch it out by the time it gets to whoever it's going to so uh, and I, I also try not to put a ton of friction into the yarn when I'm skinning it up I don't want to felt it or anything like that even though this is super wash um, if you mess with it too much uh, it can get a little fuzzy on you so I'm just going to rotate once twice three times four times now at four times personally in my experience I tend to just kind of even out the tension just by gently twisting okay and the ties can make it look a little bit uneven but uh, you definitely want those in there for this so then I'll twist a fifth time and a sixth time and now I'm starting to get some some tension into this yarn and then a seventh time so at seven that's usually pretty good for most skeins of yarn on some bases you need a little bit more on some bases you need a little bit less it really depends on the yarn uh, on singles I tend not to twist as hard just because there's not as much uh, individual strands there I don't want to pull anything apart and uh, typically on DK or worsted weight yarns I don't tend to put as much tension in because it, it tends to fluff up and, and it, I think it looks a little bit better to have like that nice uh, fluffy appearance to the yarn when it's all skeined up it's going to look a little bit more uniform the more tension that I've got in it but if it's if I don't have more tension in it then it's going to just be that nice fluffy chunky yarn which a lot of times when we're ordering um, like a DK weight that's kind of what we want to see right so the next thing that I do is I put my hand in the center of the yarn skein and I'm going to hold it uh, you can use like the knife edge of your hand you can use you can pinch it it doesn't matter uh, frankly I haven't given it much thought at all until now because <laughs> I haven't ever had to explain it before so 
I'm gonna try, so what I, yeah, that's what I usually do. I just put my fingers in there. Either way, it's just a stopping point. You're gonna wanna fold up, but I'm not going to just let go. What I'm going to do is make the first twist at the front. And what that does is it ensures that it's nice and even. Otherwise, what ends up happening is the yarn partially unravels and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't stay even throughout the skein. It just, it just kind of runs straight up. Um, so there you can see that it's already a skein. It wants to twist on itself. So the next thing that I do is I gently pull apart the, um, I gently pull apart the, uh, the spot where the, um, the knitting needle is in. And you just kind of work your fingers in there and kind of get it out. I don't know if you guys can see that. But what the next thing I'm going to do is slip that over top of the eye hook. Um, I'll see if I can get that in here closer. So what I'm going to do, you can see that it's, it's through there. Next, it's going to go straight up over top of this eye hook, okay? Then what I'm going to do is pull it off of the hook and I'm gonna put pressure on the underside. And what that does is it allows the yarn to kind of come through like that. And we'll just push it through just like that. And now I've still got my, um, I still got my knitting needle in there as kind of a placeholder because sometimes you'll get this done and it just won't turn out properly and you have to go through and reskein it up. But you know, no big deal. So at this point, uh, the one end is already through the other end and so I can take the knitting needle out and it just slides out just like that. The last thing I do is just kind of tug a little bit and um, just kind of even out the skinny yarn so that it looks a little bit nicer and that the and I always I always tend to try and feel throughout the yarn to make sure that there's not any spots with excess tension and that would be like really really tight it happens occasionally but uh, not not too often and I just even out any strands to make it look a little bit nicer and then that's the finish finished product that you end up with it ends up a lot more even a little bit uh, easier for me at least than skeining up by hand. So just thought I would share that with you guys real quick and uh, thought you might like to see that. Thanks for watching.